If you clicked on this video, you are most likely interested in the subject of fine watchmaking and have certainly come across the terms the big three or the holy trinity of watches. But what is behind this term and which renowned brands belong to this triple? What qualities and skills must a watchmaker have in order to be accepted into this exclusive club? And where does this term come from? Today we want to explain this to you by means of three unique and high quality watches with some amazing bracelets. So lean back, enjoy the intro and look forward to a lot of new knowledge. When someone speaks of the holy trinity of Swiss watchmaking, they mean Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe and Vacheron Constantin. The term stands for quality, craftsmanship, desirability and a high level of craftsmanship. In today's world of luxury watches, there are of course quite a few brands like Omega, Jäger Le Coultre, Rolex and many others that are also considered the pinnacle of watchmaking. However, our three brands today stand out and we'd like to explain why. The term holy trinity of watches has been used since the mid 1970s and it is not really known where this term first appeared and was shaped. But it was probably coined by collectors and watch enthusiasts on various online forums where many of the nicknames and terms for watches have their roots. However, since the term is not an official club of watch brands, there are no official rules or criteria for what makes a watch brand worthy of inclusion or not. Furthermore, different people have different definitions. What is important to remember about this terminology, however, is that the big three or the holy trinity does not mean the same as the best three. This trio of watchmakers does not automatically mean that they are the best in the industry. Rather, there are numerous factors and criteria that most likely guided the watch enthusiasts in the 70s. All three of these renowned Swiss watch brands have a very long history testifying not only to centuries of experience but also to their ongoing relevance in today's market. Patek Philippe was founded in 1839 while Audemars Piguet first saw the light of day in 1875. And Vacheron Constantin is the oldest watch manufacturer in the world dating back to 1755. All three watch brands then as now focus on fine watchmaking or haute horlogerie. They do not mass produce their watches and place more focus on craftsmanship, complicated movements and making watches as a work of art rather than functional watches. Part of the main collection of these companies focuses on timepieces with complicated complications ranging from minute repeaters and perpetual calendars to flyback chronographs with split seconds. Additionally, both Patek Philippe and Vacheron Constantin have had the honor of producing the world's most complicated watch at various times in their history. So just pay attention to this close-up from the Vacheron Constantin bracelet. <laughs> what a finish! And each of our three watches today show the distinct art of watchmaking with handcrafted finishes, bracelets and the use of the finest materials such as 18K yellow and white gold. Mechanics aside, all three are also known for movements that are lavishly handcrafted using traditional techniques including the famous Côte de Genève, also known as Geneva Stripes, as you can see it here on the Vacheron Constantin Calibre 1003. It is often said that these three top brands pay as much attention to the decorations of their mostly hidden movements as they do to the dials, hands and external components of their fine watches. All these points clearly underline why, for example, Rolex does not quite fit into this conceptualization. In contrast to our triple, Rolex was designed to produce robust and reliable watches. Although there are also models made of noble materials and one or two highly complicated models, the brand is known for its tool watches such as diving watches and chronographs like this Daytona, but also precise simple watches like this Oyster Perpetual date from the 60s. Well, Rolex's unique selling point has never been high watchmaking complex watch complications and fine decorated movements. Instead, the crown expertise lies in making extremely durable, high quality watches that are easy to use and practical for everyday wear. With a total production of about 1 million watches per year, Rolex makes many times more watches than all the Holy Trinity brands combined. 
That's true for the 21th century, but also true for the 20th century. As a result, Rolex naturally cannot and has not been able to demonstrate the same level of attention and detail when it comes to hand finishing, embellishing and putting the finishing touches on the things that make a true haute horlogerie timepiece. And as mentioned earlier, the fact that a company like Rolex is not part of the Holy Trinity does not mean that they make inferior products. It can only mean that they have a different vision and goal in mind than the others. They simply have a different target group to appeal to. There's a lot of discussion on the internet about the current status of the big three and of course there are many personal opinions about which brand should be part of it today. But that simply doesn't change the fact that when someone talks about the Holy Trinity they mean Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe and Vajon Constantin. After we have clarified what the big three actually are, let's take a closer look at the first watch of these beautiful classic wrist charmers and start with Vajon Constantin. Here we have one of the rarest and most interesting pieces from Vacheron Constantin we ever have seen. This piece was born in the 1970s, listen to the reference 2079P and under the hood beats in manual wound Vacheron Caliber 1003 with 18,000 beats per hour and 46 hours power reserve. So pay attention to the already mentioned Geneva stripe finish of the movement. It's so pleasing to look at and underlines once again the craftsmanship of this manufacturer. The 18K white gold case measuring 31.5 mm diameter, 34 mm from lac to lac and 25 mm between the lacs. So just pay attention to this beautiful refined basket wave finish bracelet and case. The woven pattern makes it move very smoothly and it feels like a second skin when worn. Yes, you can even say the wearing comfort of this watch is a 10 of 10. My brother and I have a big weakness for natural stone dials. And the icing on the cake here is the rare deep blue lapis lazuli dial, which adds a touch of color and freshness to the watch in an understated way. The white gold case, in contrast to this blue, simply draws us under its spell. So let's move on with the second watch of our today's triple, a Patek Philippe ellipse from the 1980s. A grill for many, and if you ask me, for reasons. This reference 3978 hit all the high notes with an 18K yellow gold case, with integrated yellow gold bracelet and a wonderful blue Sigma dial in flawless condition. Additionally, the dial is made entirely of gold, even the blue paint, as indicated by the Sigma symbols at the bottom of the dial. It measures 29 mm without crown, 37 mm from lac to lac and 19 mm between the lacs. It gets driven by a manual wine Patek Philippe Calibre 215 PS with 18,000 beats per hour and a power reserve of 44 hours. This watch is made of solid 106 grams yellow gold and yet is not too obtrusive on the wrist. For those who are rather critical of gold watches but have always flirted with a solid gold watch, this classic ellipse is a very good choice. It is discreet with its rather small width but still has a pleasant size due to the distance of 37 mm from lac to lac. Now let's move on to my personal favorite of today's triple. In Audemars Piguet in 18K white gold with a reference 74403 which is equipped with a so-called Bismarck bracelet which we have never seen on a wristwatch before. The 18K white gold case measuring 33.5 mm in diameter, 33 mm from lac to lac and the bracelet is 21 mm in width. The 18K white gold Bismarck bracelet is incredibly well made and also wears like a second skin. I don't know why, but the design strongly reminds me of small human-like structures. The icing on the cake here is the rare deep matte gray dial in flawless condition. It fitted with the Caliber 2120, which is one of the most famous in the watch industry. Jointly developed by Jigle Coultre, Audemars Piguet and Vacheron Constantin, it remained for several decades the world's thinnest mechanical movement with automatic winding and central rotor. So, what do all three watches have in common except for their status in the Trinity Club? They all have an integrated bracelet. We would like to take this opportunity to briefly tell you about the pros and cons of these bracelets. We all know bracelets like the Oyster, Jubilee, President, Rice Bats, Royal Oak Mesh, The Ladder, Milanese and so on. But the vintage world offers so much more, especially in the processing of gold raw materials. Historically, watches with integrated bracelets were a privilege of women. It would almost be more accurate 
to speak of bracelets with integrated watches. Consider the first wristwatch in history, the Countess Koskovich's Patek Philippe, as well as the magnificent jewelry creations produced over the years by brands such as Piaget. These objects were primarily intended as a piece of jewelry. The possibility of reading the time on them was secondary. But this changed in the 1970s, and brands like Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe, and Vacheron Constantine also took their first steps into this design language, and it absolutely paid off. But back to the pros and cons. Our three examples today with integrated bracelets are not compatible with aftermarket bracelets, as their locks are one unit with a case and are simply not compatible with typical bracelets that have straight spring bars at their ends. This means that when you're buying such watches, you should be very careful that the bracelet length corresponds to your wrist circumference. Because, as a rule, this type of bracelets are adjustable only plus minus 0.5 cm through the clasp. But if you're completely in love with a piece, you still have the option of taking the watch to an experienced goldsmith. You can cut the elements of the bracelet and adjust them to your size. The cost is between 800 to 1000 euros in Germany, for example. Depending on the country, this costs vary, of course. A big plus, on the other hand, as already mentioned, is the feel, the comfort, and of course, the presence on the wrist. These are watches that are you hardly ever run across, which makes them something very special. Integrated bracelets are always the result of a conscious design decision. The result is a very simple design language where the bracelet blends seamlessly with the case. At the end I can say we love these watches because of the incredible comfort, the uniqueness that these bracelets bring and of course the simplicity of the design. So that's it for today, we hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day and hope to see you again in the next one.